Rioters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the coast. Welcome to Hashtag PH 2013. Today on Rappler, the Philippine National Police suspends 10 cops for running a secret torture prison in Laguna. The Solicitor General argues before the Supreme Court the controversial disbursement acceleration program won't be used again. And Ukraine's Prime Minister resigns to ease the country's deadly two-month crisis. Hello, I'm Ayi Makaraig, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The Philippine National Police, or PNP, suspends 10 cops for running a secret prison where inmates were beaten and abused. The Commission on Human Rights, or CHR, and global rights organization Amnesty International criticize the PNP and demand the prosecution of the suspects and the shutdown of the facility. In a statement, Amnesty International says, For police officers to use torture for fun is despicable. These are abhorrent acts. Suspending officers is not enough. CHR spokesman Mark Sebrero says the torture has been going on since February last year in a prison in Laguna run by the intelligence unit of the Binyan police. Sebrero says its officers spin a roulette wheel to pick the torture method to be used on inmates like the so-called Manny Pacman position where a prisoner is continuously punched for 20 seconds and hanging him upside down for 30 seconds. Chief Inspector Arnold Formento and nine subordinates face administrative charges for grave misconduct and could also face criminal charges. A Laguna police statement confirms the 10 officers are confined to a police camp for alleged maltreatment of detainees. Solicitor General Francis Hardeleza says the petitions against the Controversial Disbursement Acceleration Program, or DAP, are now moot because the DAP won't be used again. Hardeleza represents the government before the Supreme Court during oral arguments questioning the DAP's constitutionality. The government says the DAP is a spending program meant to boost the economy, but critics hit its legality, saying the president cannot realign funds from unfinished projects. In oral arguments in November, Senior Justice Antonio Carpio said the budget department has been realigning budget items without the president's approval. But Hardileza says Aquino approved the disbursements for all the 116 projects funded through DAP. He also says these projects were items already within the General Appropriations Act. On the second day of the oral arguments, administration officials defend the realignment of savings to quick disbursing projects. Hardileza says, quote, In a perfect world, agencies promptly spend the funds allocated for them but adds the DAP was implemented because this was not the case. Justice Roberto Abad asked Hardeleza if the realignment of funds from an abandoned project is a, quote, alteration of the will of Congress, which appropriated the funds. Hardeleza says there is no alteration of the will of the legislature. The catchphrase of the president, which is to use it or lose it, is faithful to the law. Carpio tells Budget Secretary Butch Abad the government should identify the sources of the funds for each of the 116 projects that the DAP augmented. The Social Weather Stations, or SWS, says the Aquino administration is enjoying uncharted popularity, but the unresolved Maguindanao massacre remains a sore point. Aquino gets a net satisfaction rating of 51%, but gets negative 26% net satisfaction ratings in resolving the 2009 massacre. 58 people were killed in what is considered the worst case of political violence in the Philippines. At least 86% of the 1,550 respondents say the pace of the trial is much too slow. It is the highest dissatisfaction from 74% complaining about the pace in August 2012 and 75% in March 2011. Last year, various groups reminded the president that resolving the massacre was his campaign promise. University of the Philippines professor Ed Nako says the results show government performance cannot depend on the sincerity of the president alone. 
In the case of the Maguindanao massacre, she says the negative ratings on the government's performance is a, quote, stigma to the performance of the Department of Justice. A bomb explodes in a bus terminal in Datupiang, Maguindanao, Tuesday, injuring an eight-year-old girl and a pregnant woman. This comes as soldiers clash with members of the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, or BIFF, a breakaway group of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, or MILF. The military says it killed 17 BIFF members in three days of fighting. Colonel Dixon Hermoso of the Military 6th Infantry Division says more than 1,500 troops are involved in the attacks against the BIFF in remote farming areas of central Mindanao. Hermoso says soldiers are carrying out law enforcement operations to capture 25 of the militants. The attacks were launched Monday, two days after the successful end of negotiations between the government and the MILF aimed at ending decades of fighting in Mindanao. The BIFF broke away from the MILF over serious disagreements about the peace talks. BIFF spokesman Abu Misri Mama denies they planted and detonated the bomb in Maguindanao. He says, we do not use bombs and we do not attack civilians. These civilians are our relatives. We will not hurt them. The Philippines will repatriate 1,000 overseas Filipino workers in Saudi Arabia after it negotiated with immigration and deportation officials. The Philippines Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, says it began bringing 100 Filipinos to the General Services Center in Saudi Arabia on Sunday. Once these OFWs return to the Philippines, the number of Filipinos flown home from Saudi Arabia will reach more than 8,000. The Philippines is repatriating thousands of Filipinos after Saudi Arabia launched a crackdown on undocumented foreign workers last November 3rd. Illegal workers face up to two years in prison and fines of at least 100,000 real or $27,000. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, files a complaint against Denise Cornejo, Cedric Lee, and six others involved in the alleged extortion and mauling of comedian Vong Navarro. They are accused of serious illegal detention, serious physical injuries, grave threats, grave coercion, unlawful arrest, and threatening to publish and offer to prevent such publication for a compensation. This comes after Cornejo and Navarro traded accusations over conflicting versions of the incident. 22-year-old model Cornejo claimed Navarro tried to rape her in her own condominium. Her friends who allegedly came to her rescue said he was injured as they tried to subdue him. A police blotter report supports Cornejo's version. But Navarro denies the allegations, saying he was set up for extortion and brutally beaten. The actor said the armed men threatened him with a gun and asked him to pay a million pesos. For our social media post of the day, netizens react to the NBI's quick action on the case of Vong Navarro. Some praise the Bureau, while others point to cases that have dragged on for years. Alan Lim Olipane says, The justice system acts quickly if the victim is a celebrity or public figure. Jaren Repredo says, Victims of prostitution and human trafficking needed you. Where were you then? This looks like it was done just to win brownie points. Ukrainian Prime Minister Mykola Azarov resigns Tuesday in a bid to ease the country's deadly two-month crisis. In a statement, Azarov says he hopes his resignation will create a, quote, political compromise to peacefully resolve the conflict. Ukraine's embattled government scraps anti-protest laws and offers amnesty to demonstrators who seize the Justice Ministry headquarters. This statement comes after another round of talks between the government of President Viktor Yanukovych and the opposition. Over the weekend, opposition followers rallied in Kiev's Maidan Square to demand Yanukovych's resignation and new elections. The clashes culminate in a takeover of the Justice Ministry Sunday. The street clashes started out as peaceful public protests over Yanukovych's rejection of a trade deal with the European Union under Russian pressure. Let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 5, 
the top military body of Egypt backs the presidential bid of Commander Abdul Fattah al-Sisi. The announcement comes after a weekend of militant attacks and street clashes between supporters of ousted leader Mohamed Morsi and police. In July, Sisi led efforts to topple Morsi, the country's democratically elected leader. A victory for the 59-year-old Sisi will continue a tradition of Egyptian presidents coming from the armed forces. At number 6, British reporter Dan Evans admits illegally accessing celebrities' voicemail messages while working at tabloid News of the World and its rival The Sunday Mirror. During the UK's phone hacking trial Monday, Evans says News of the World recruited him partly because of his phone hacking skills. Evans is the fourth News of the World journalist to plead guilty to phone hacking and the first to admit doing it at the Sunday Mirror. Former News of the World editor Andy Colson and other executives are also accused of hacking the phones of hundreds of celebrities and public figures. British actor Jude Law testifies at the trial, telling the jury the media seemed to have an unhealthy amount of information about his private life. And at number 10. Scientists studying the 7,000-year-old remains of a man from the Mesolithic period found he had dark skin and blue eyes. The remains of the man scientists call Labrano I was found in Spain in 2006. While his skin pigmentation genes were associated with Africans, the big surprise is the blue eye color associated with Northern Europeans, resulting in a, quote, unique phenotype in a genome that is otherwise clearly Northern European. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories that got the most clicks. In today's mood navigator, a lot of the stories are still about Vong Navarro, but we have other stories coming in. From tech. Google launches Street View Cars Photograph Philippine Streets has 88% of readers feeling happy, 8% amused. Miriam FOI Blockbuster disclosed politicians' total income, 84% happy, 5% inspired. But the most popular story on the Mood Navigator is a thought leader's piece on the speech of Senator Bong Revilla. Thank you, Senator Revilla, written by Dr. Silvia Claudio. 80% of people are happy, 8% inspired. All contributing to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, January 28, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch your newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Ayi Makaraig and as we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.